seven mistakes that are costing you 98% of your conversions. Doesn't matter whether you have a very well established site and brand or if you are new. I see websites and marketing teams making those mistakes all the time. We are gonna be discussing those mistakes and how to fix each one of them. Hello everyone, this is Khaled with Invesp. This channel is all about helping you improve your site conversion rates so you can make more money online. Now we do that by sharing the best tips, strategies, and tactics on how to do that. If you are new to the channel, I'd love for you to subscribe and of course, like and comment. Let's jump right in. Number one, the catalog website. You know what I mean. Every day when you go check your mailbox, you receive a whole bunch of mail that you don't really care for. Some of that is paper catalogs that get sent to you in the mail. Now, unfortunately, what some e-commerce companies have done is they've taken their paper catalog and they transformed it into the online version of that catalog. So what you end up with is a website that has no spirit, nothing that stands out and tells visitors why they should buy from this particular store or why they should buy right now, right this second. Now, as you browse through the internet for the next couple of days, I want you to keep that in mind as you go from one e-commerce website to the next. Is it more of a catalog website or is there something unique about these sites that you are browsing? If you feel that you are looking at a catalog website, then keep that in mind. And if you feel that you found a website that you fell in love with, then ask yourself the question, what is unique about the website? How do they stand out? Is it in copy? Is it in design? Is it in the offer that they have? Armed with all this information, look at your own website. Is there something unique to it? Is there something that's going to push people to fall in love? love with the site and the brand? And is there something that pushes visitors to act right away? Number two is the beautiful website. It is the complete opposite of the catalog website. And in this type of website, designers and marketers, maybe top management have gone above and beyond and they created a very fancy website at the expense of the site functionality. Maybe this is not as prevalent problem as the catalog website, but I do find websites where I struggle to find the CTA. The images are too large and they slow down the website. So while the website needs to be elegant and beautiful, it still needs to be practical and functional. So make sure that your website is neither a catalog website that lacks the spirit, nor should it be a beautiful website at the expense of the user experience and practicality. Number three, forgetting that not all traffic is created equal. Your most valuable traffic as an e-commerce website is direct traffic. Those people who know the website, they remember the URL address for the website and they'll type it up in the browser and they will come to your site. The stronger your brand is, the higher the percentage of direct traffic and your conversion rate for direct traffic should be a lot higher compared to traffic coming from other sources. Your second most valuable traffic is perhaps your email traffic because those are people who gave you their email and they said, you know what? We want to establish that relationship with your site. Now let's talk about organic traffic. You can get organic traffic either from search engines, mainly perhaps Google, or you can get organic traffic from social websites, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and whatnot. The value of that organic traffic will vary from one website to the next. Generally speaking, traffic coming from social media websites will have lower conversion rate compared to all other types of traffic. The only exception to that, if you have strong presence on social media and you're able to create a cult following, if I may use this term, you might have really great conversion rate rates for that traffic. We work with one company where they have very strong organic presence on YouTube. And every time they publish a YouTube video, we can see the website conversion rate jump by 200 and 300%. How about organic traffic coming from Google? This traffic is really valuable, but most of the time, this traffic is top of the funnel traffic. They are not ready to convert. They are still early in the search phase for your product or your service. For that reason, that traffic is valuable. However, don't expect miracles from that traffic. How about paid traffic? Well, it depends. If you look at paid traffic from Google, most of those visitors have shown their interest in the particular product that you sell. They have already gone to the search engine, search for the particular product, and your listing is showing there. So those are visitors who are in the bottom of the funnel. They are ready to convert. And if you're able to remove all the barriers in conversion from their way, then they have a really good chance of converting on your website. Paid social traffic, 
traffic can be valuable, but it will generally have lower conversion rate compared to all other types of traffic that you have on your website. So what you need to do is evaluate the traffic mix. How are you allocating your marketing budget between these different channels, understanding that you need to continue feeding the beast, you need to be spending money on SEO, you need to be spending money on social traffic, and at the same time, you need to get instant sales. You need to be generating sales today and tomorrow. So have that right mix. Usually we like to spend 80% of the marketing budget on acquiring new customers and 20% on social traffic, organic traffic that helps us build the brand and invest in bringing future sales for the brand. Number four, continuity. Every time somebody sees a message about your site, about your products outside of your website, they might see it in an email. They might see it in a post on social media. They might see it in a Google organic results. That post, that listing is making a promise to the visitors. When they click and they land on your website, you need to maintain continuity. If your email is promising them a certain discount and then they click on that email, then the landing page should mention that same promise to the visitors. It is telling them that you are in the right place. Yes, you clicked on the right link. Yes, we do have that special offer. By maintaining continuity, you're able to gain the visitor's trust and you will tell them, yes, continue your journey on our website. Number five, websites fail at the grandma test. Here's a problem that most e-commerce websites struggle with. They do not look at usability for the least sophisticated users. Think about your website. What do you expect your visitors to do? Maybe you have an e-commerce website that sells apparel. So I expect visitors to come in, land at a particular page, maybe go to my collection pages. They'll use some filtration to find the right product, click on the add to cart, and then go through the checkout. It sounds very simple, but in reality, we fail at providing visitors with the information that they need in the different steps so they can continue with the checkout process and actually placing an order with our website. What I like to do is find somebody who is older, don't mean to offend anybody, but find somebody who is older, bring them a laptop, or maybe you bring them an iPhone or an Android device and ask them, hey, can you take a look at my website? Can you search for maybe a red skirt that is between 40 and $50 and go ahead and place an order for that item for yourself and watch them interact with your website. See where they are struggling. What is stopping them from finding the right product, clicking on the add to cart and finishing the purchase. The grandma test is very powerful in uncovering simple usability issues that you might have on your website. Number six, too many options, which causes cognitive load. Yes, it's a fancy word, but look at your collection pages. You have a collection page, you have many product options. The visitor needs to select the right product that fits the particular problem that they are trying to solve. Is it easy to find that right product or do visitors end up opening multiple products and having to compare between those products on their own? I see this problem particularly in electronics website, but it could happen on any type of website. I was trying to buy a rice cooker a couple of days ago. We're not going to get into the details of why I need to buy a rice cooker to make good rice. However, I've decided on the particular brand that I want. Well, it turns out that that particular brand has about 15 different models that they sell. And the price range from $50 for the cheaper models up to $500 for a rice cooker. I eliminated the $40 model. And at the same time, I eliminated the $500 model. And then I was left with about 12 different models. And I was trying to figure out the difference between them, which one is right for me, which one is going to give me the best rice for the particular rice that we cook regularly. I could not find the right information on the particular manufacturer's website. I went on YouTube searching. I ended up going through different blogs. It was a very confusing experience. Does that happen to visitors coming to your website? Number seven, you're not addressing the concerns that people have on different pages on your website. Let's think about the different concerns that people have as they go from one area of your website to the next. There are different concerns. On landing pages, I'm thinking to myself, am I in the right place? Can I trust this brand? Should I continue or not? On a category page, I'm trying to select the right product for me. So you need to make sure that the filtration that you are using on your collection pages relate to the actual features that visitors will use in selecting the right product. Let's jump into the product pages. What are the visitors concerns on your product pages? I've been wanting to buy a winter jacket. Yes, it is summer, but I need a new winter jacket. And I figured, you know what? Everybody seems to be raving about North Face and how great their jackets are. 
York and North Face has about 12 different jackets. I go to the actual product pages and I'm trying to make a decision and distinguish between these different jackets. I could not figure out the right jacket for me. And then I was also concerned about the jacket fits. I was also concerned on how warm this jacket is gonna be because I decided to buy the jacket in the summer. So I'm not gonna be able to actually test it out until maybe five or six months from now. Those are all concerns that I've had as a visitor. Now, what I want you to think about is what are the concerns? What are the actual FUDs, fears, uncertainties, and doubts that visitors will have from one page to the next as they go through your website? Are you addressing those concerns? What is the best way to address those concerns? Those are the seven issues that I see most websites struggle with. Here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and run quickly through those issues, come up with practical fixes to your website, and A-B test them on your website, and then come back here and report to us what kind of lift you are seeing as a result of making those fixes to your website. Until next time, happy testing.